Ole Miss versus Arkansas will go off the rails just like it always does. You are locked on Ole Miss, your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Locked On Ole Miss Podcast, your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. Hello, I'm Stephen Willis, a 10-year veteran member of the national media with Yahoo Sports and a former Ole Miss staff member as well. On today's show, we break down the upcoming matchup between Ole Miss and Arkansas. Lane Kiffin has his work cut out for him, as this game is always one of the wildest on the schedule. I'm joined by John Neighbors from Locked On Razorbacks to talk about what makes this matchup So unpredictable and get to know the Arkansas Razorbacks just a little bit and what both teams need to do to come out on top. It's going to be a crazy one, so don't worry about that and don't miss this episode. We're free and available on all the podcast apps and on YouTube. Thank you for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen every day and a special hello to the insiders and everydayers who make the show what it is. Don't forget to find a second listen on the network, Chris Gordy at Locked On SEC, Or Corey Burton and Locked On Vandy offer great perspectives on the SEC, college football, and even Ole Miss. So check them out as well. You can start the season off with a big return on FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bet if you win your first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Now, this is traditionally the drunkest game on the schedule, period, bar none. Crazy, weird stuff happens. Now, we don't know exactly why that happens, but it's always the case. Think about over the last few years. And 2021 was like the 56 to 55 game with the two-point conversion at the end. 2020 was the six-interception game. 2022 in Fayetteville was the Lane Kiffin to Auburn Bowl and all the weirdness that happened there. Last season, Ole Miss was able to win by a touchdown. But if you even go back in time a little bit more, 2015 was fourth and 25. 2014, Ole Miss was ranked very high in the playoff standings and got beat 30 to nothing in Fayetteville. 1990, the hit. The five overtime game with Eli Manning. Weird stuff has followed this series since the inception. There's a game that is on the schedule that they dispute over an ineligible player back in like 1920. In 1960, they argue over a, whether a field goal is good or not, still to this day. Weird stuff happens when Ole Miss and Arkansas play. It just always has. It is the craziest game on the schedule each and every year, and this year it just simply means more. And why does it mean more? Well, with a win in Fayetteville, Jackson Dart can become the winningest quarterback in the history of Ole Miss football. Jackson Dart will likely become the total offense leader in this game. Jackson Dart will be well on his way to being the passing yarder. He's going to own every record that's meaningful that Ole Miss has by the time he leaves Ole Miss. He just is. If you look at team type stuff, Ole Miss is still in the playoff picture. Now, They're down the playoff picture thanks to that albatross that we call the Kentucky game, but they're in it, and they need to win this game desperately in a place that they have not won since 2008 to make it happen. So they have to get over Arkansas. And if Ole Miss gets over Arkansas, there is the possibility that game day appears in Oxford next week and that Georgia game becomes everything. There's pressure coming from all different directions on the Ole Miss football team. There is a legit chance that this Ole Miss team will come out tight in this game because of all the pressure coming from every direction. There's also the chance that Ole Miss puts it all together and completely runs the table. So we'll see exactly how it goes. I'm looking forward so much to the conversation with John Neighbors from Lock On Razorbacks in a couple of moments because he has an interesting perspective on the Razorbacks. He's a little bit of a fatalist. He's kind of snarky. All of that stuff that everybody enjoys, John brings that to the table. In fact, let's get right to it right now. Let's go to Thunderdome. Let's go. We're going into Thunderdome. It's the dumbest game in the SEC schedule. It's the dumbest game every year. Something ridiculous happens. There's seven overtimes. There's fourth and 25. There's weird two-point conversions. There's the hit that happens that somehow at the corner of the end zone, he does not go out of bounds. This game is absolutely bizarre. And John, we only get to do this once a year. 
I know. We talk about uh, so many games and teams in the SEC that's rivalries and epic games and epic matchups, but I feel like Arkansas and Ole Miss get slept on a lot because it, it's strange, and I know your Ole Miss audience probably won't want to hear this, but of all, Arkansas has not had much success against many SEC teams over the past 10 years, but for some reason, Ole Miss, they've they've had their fair share of good good games against them. So I know that Ole Miss fans probably don't feel great about this game. Arkansas fans don't feel about this game, but I think we're both in agreement that it's going to get weird, it's going to get drunk, and it's going to get crazy in Fayetteville. Yeah, and it absolutely is. And the weird thing about this is it doesn't feel like it, but Ole Miss is going for their fifth win in seven games against Arkansas. Their only two losses have been the two games in Fayetteville. Ole Miss can beat Arkansas in Little Rock. They can beat Ox um, beat them in Oxford. And Fayetteville, something is going wrong. Which is weird because for the past year and a half, two years, Arkansas's worst performances in football have been at home in Fayetteville. Uh, the year that Arkansas, you mentioned it, two years ago, where Arkansas was up, I believe, 42-7 to seven in the beginning of the third quarter. Uh, that And I think Ole Miss ended up making it a closer game in the final score, but it wasn't close at all. But I remember watching that game, and I'm like, hold on a second. So this is the, this is the same Razorback team that beat Cincinnati only by a touchdown at home, that needed a last-minute punt return to beat Bobby Petrino in Missouri State at home, that had some of their worst performances at home, but yet they blow out Ole Miss, who was actually a really good team that year. It, it, again, it just shows how much or how little sense that this game makes each and every year. Yeah, it, it's fun. And I'm, you know, the show that's going to air a little bit later on tonight, I talk about like the SEC is getting ready to probably go to nine conference games. And part of that, the three permanent rivals that Ole Miss are go is going to have is Mississippi State, LSU, and Arkansas. And the drunkenness of this game makes me really enjoy that this game be, is on the schedule. I'm sure Ole Miss fans would rather have Vanderbilt on the schedule, although maybe not after this year. But um, it's a situation, it's fun. It, it's, you know, Arkansas, for the longest time in the SEC, they came in and had Southwest Conference feel to them. They were the westernmost team in the SEC. So they were a little bit different. You saw teams that had all their bands, they sounded the same, all the SEC schools. Arkansas sounded a little bit different. The William Tell stuff, the calling the hogs, and all of that gave them a unique ability. And Ole Miss has been playing Arkansas every year since 1981. So... I, I just enjoy this game. Now, the rivalry is there. If you want to go by my YouTube comments and my Twitter comments and all that, Arkansas fans are pretty good to tell me that I'm a dumbass. But I do enjoy this game. Yeah, I mean, it's hard not to. And, again, if you're a Razorback fan, there's there's so many games of note. You know, I remember as a young kid watching, I remember where I was when that seven-overtime game between Matt Jones and Eli Manning in 2001. And I mentioned this on Twitter where it's funny how Arkansas played in a seven overtime, then a six overtime, then a seven overtime game in three straight years, nothing happens. But as soon as LSU and A&M play in a seven overtime game, they got to change all the rules. But still, at that point in time, that was it was such an iconic and legendary game because no one had seen anything like that before. Mm -hmm. And there's been a lot of that, where it's not just, oh, it's a good old-fashioned game. No, there's stuff that happens in this game that no one has seen before. That 2015 Hunter Henry heave, which I know still is in the crawl of Ole Miss fans because that's the game that kept them out of the SEC Western title. Mm -hmm. But no one has seen anything like that before in, in overtime. With, it just doesn't make sense. So it, it's not just a game that features teams going back and forth or you know having some weird things happen like a fumble or an interception. No, we're talking about things that are pretty historic and pretty legendary that you just don't see happen in college football in general. Yeah, in 2021, the Matt Corral game, the K.J. Jefferson game that yeah. ended up on a two-point convert, just weird stuff has happened. And I do fear, okay, I do fear that that game, the drunkenness of the game is going to kind of switch over to Mississippi State now that Jeff Levy is over there and their, their allergicness to defense, apparently. So I, a lot of weird stuff can happen, but – even in years that you don't expect something weird to happen. There was the Chad Morris versus Matt Luke game in Little Rock. I mean, Phew. yeah, I mean, it's just one of those things where you look at it before the game and you're like, this is going to be gross. And yeah. then you watch the game and you're like, what? Yeah. How does that happen? <laughs> well, still same thing with, uh, you know, the, the 2020 game. Six interceptions thrown by Matt Corral, mm -hmm. where I think he threw 13 total that year. And like six of them came there and five of them came in a different game that year. So, 
Uh, Hudson Clark, as I referred to as the no-fly zone, uh, still on the team. The guy that had three interceptions in that game against Matt Corral, still on the team. And I think he only has two more interceptions since that point in time, and he's played and started every year. So, yeah, again, we could go on and on and on about just how many instances there are of these two teams meeting up and having the, the weirdest of things happen. And that's where, I'm, I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm kind of leaning into, because I feel that way about this game, probably means this game is going to be the most normal and boring game of all time. And it'll just be like, oh yeah, that was pretty anticlimactic. Because 11 a.m. game, chances of a little bit of rain, but maybe not there in Fayetteville. Uh, I think that potential's there for it to get crazy. But I also feel like, Arkansas, anytime I feel like the game's going to get crazy, ends up being a real downer. So we'll see. I, I think this has a chance to be a 17 to 10 game. Honest, yeah. I, I, re, I, I think that it's going to fool everybody by the fact that both of these teams' defenses, I mean, Arkansas's defense did really well against Tennessee, their supposed high powered offense and what's going on. They did just enough for that Bobby Petrino offense to go down and score a touchdown and get the win. I think that something similar is going to happen because Ole Miss's defense is just as good as Tennessee. So I'm thinking a relatively low-scoring game. If it's a high-scoring game, Ole Miss is probably going to win this game going away. But I think it's going to be somewhere 17-10, 17-13, 20-13, that range. Now, I'll be shocked if this game is, gets high-scoring because I'm going to be honest right now. To, to me, the, the, the key number for Arkansas on points that they score is 24. If Arkansas scores 24 points, they win the game. That, that's how I feel about it. Anything less than that, they more than likely lose. Because the one thing that Arkansas, which their offense has improved as the year's gone on, I'm not taking the Mississippi State game as a uh, a measuring stick because that defense is so bad. I mean, wow. it is so bad. So you can't you, you can gain some confidence from it, but you can't look at it as any sort of correlation into this one. But the one thing that Arkansas has at times struggled against, and when they struggled against it, it ends up being their downfall offensively, is sacks. And when the, the, against AM, that defensive front ate Arkansas up. And luckily, Arkansas's defense was really good in that game. And they held Marcel Reed uh, to where it was at least a, a good matchup. Arkansas lost 21 17. But you're talking about going up against Ole Miss that they, they get after the quarterback, man. And if they get after Taylor Green, they put that pressure on him. Yeah, it could be a long day for Arkansas. And it could honestly, it could honestly turn into a game like Arkansas had against LSU a couple weeks ago where Arkansas loses like 34 to 10. I, I could absolutely see that happening. Yeah, and Taylor Green obviously is going to give Ole Miss fans nightmares because of the Matt Jones comparison. When you see him running around, I know he's not the same quarterback that Matt Jones was, but when you see this long, lanky, long strider running around on the football field, you can't help but make that comparison. Oh, I know. And I'm so glad that you remember Matt Jones because it's like, <laughs> I feel like kids these days, they, they forget about just how incredible Matt Jones was. I mean, just to be honest, a six foot six, 240 pound quarterback. He ran a four, three, seven. All right. Like that's, that's almost as fast as Michael Vick at the NFL combine. So yeah, he, he was, he was awesome. And there is some similarities there. I would say that the thing going for Taylor green over Matt Jones is that Taylor green does have a better arm than Matt Jones. And he has a better coach coordinator and Bobby Petrino. Mm -hmm. So that that's really helped him. But the issue is that, uh, you know, Matt Jones was the type of player that never let anything bother him. He could be down three scores. He could be up three scores. He's going to be the same dude. Well, when Taylor Green's had the pressure on him and he's lost a little bit of confidence or whatever, it, it got bad. And that's what happened in that A&M game. It got bad. But he's played, Taylor Green, that is, has played so much better over the past few weeks. If Ole Miss can't get to him and he's allowed to stand back there and do Taylor Green things, get that confidence, then it might be it might be a big day for Arkansas in that offense, but it's just about pressure. It's as simple as that. Can Ole Miss get pressure? If they do, it's going to be bad. But if they can't get to them, Taylor Green and that offense is good enough to make them pay for it. Thanks again for watching the Locked On Ole Miss podcast, the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. When we come back, we talk about some more of the storylines in the games and some players to watch. You're not going to want to miss that. Stick around. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel America's number one sports book because right now new customers can bet $5 and get $150 back in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. Ole Miss is currently about a touchdown favorite over the Arkansas Razorbacks on FanDuel, but we all know how weird this series can be. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more 
on the same page where you place your bets. Visit FanDuel.com today. Just get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Now let's go back to th- um, Thunderdome with John Abrams. All right, we are back in Thunderdome. John Neighbors from Lockdown Razorbacks is in the house. We're talking about this football game that is the dumbest of the dumb games that happens every single year. And this year's edition is in Fayetteville. And of course, for Ole Miss to proceed and stay in the comment, the conversation for the playoffs, they have to get a win in Fayetteville. And that hasn't happened. Listen, John, I had Bill Flowers on my show on Wednesday. He was a part of the Ole Miss football team that went up to Fayetteville and won in 2000. I asked him, what do you remember about that game? And he said, sometime in the third period, a person came out and started streaking on the field yes. with nothing but a hog nose on his junk. Yep. And everybody was laughing. They're tall. And that's all he could remember from that game. Yep, dude. And it's and again, that's awesome, too, because that is a game. That is another instance of craziness <laughs> that I had completely forgot about. But I do remember that game well, because that was before it was on TV. Uh, you know, th- that game wasn't even worthy of being on Jefferson Pilot back in the day. Like, it, it was an 11 a.m. kick uh, at some point. But I remember just, it was a student, and he had the big hog hat on. And he had, yeah, as you said, a thong, a Razorback thong with a hog on his junk. And Arkansas was in the huddle. Like, they had the ball. And I remember he goes up, and he pinches Matt Jones in the butt. <laughs> from, he's from behind. He turns around. He's like, what the crap? And he sees this guy just walking around. Then the dude got nailed by the uh, Arkansas State Sheriff. And uh, they took him out pretty quickly, but uh, yeah, that was that was a pretty that was a pretty iconic moment too. And uh, I, I I've been trying to actually it's funny I've tried to find that guy and to talk to him like you know twenty years after the fact. Uh, I'd love to get that story, but yes, that 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 right there. If you want to have a, a still image of what sums up this series, just that right there that that sums it up. Yeah, the the meme, uh, if you want to look at this game versus other games, it's that meme of John Daly and Tiger Woods where he's smoking a cigarette in the driver's range. That John Daly meme is the Ole Miss Arkansas game. Yeah, it is. I mean, that is that, and that's what makes it so much fun because if you even think about the the coaches that they've had go head to head, you know, you think of, of course, back when it was Houston Nutt versus Cutcliffe, it was a lot more about Eli Manning, you know, in the, in the Manning deal. And then after that, you had, when Houston Nutt left for Ole Miss from Arkansas, and Arkansas went up with Bobby Petrino. You had that era. And then you had the era of Brad Bielma and Hugh Freeze, which, again, for whatever reason, Bielma had Hugh Freeze's number in some crazy times. And, and then, of course, now you have Pittman and Kiffin, which I don't think you could have more opposite personalities and approaches than what Kiffin and Pittman are. But I don't know how you feel about it, too, Stephen. I feel like Pittman and Kiffin actually really like each other and respect each other. Uh, I, I'm not saying that, you know, that's anything new for coaches, but just going off of the past few years of what Pittman said about Kiffin and what I've heard Kiffin say about Pittman and their interactions on the field and stuff, it seems like there's a lot of respect between the two. I, I don't know of anybody probably in their right mind that doesn't respect Sam Pittman. Yeah, I know He's Warren. a hard person not to like. So, yeah, I would completely buy that if I just Lane Kiffin and Sam Pittman like each other. Yeah. yeah and, I know. and who is that one? Well, that well, that one is well. I guess there's actually technically two. I know Brett Bielma is one that does not like mm-hmm. Sam Pittman because uh, Pittman was his offensive line coach there uh, at Arkansas, and when Pittman left, the offensive line went downhill bad, and Bielma kept trying to take credit for why the offensive line was good before it wasn't Pittman; it was him. Uh, so I know that there's that, and also Eli Drinkwitz because you know no one likes Eli Drinkwitz, and I know Pittman doesn't like Eli Drinkwitz, and I know Drink doesn't like Pittman, so. Uh, mm-hmm. What do you think's up with Drink? Drink uh, now, Drink seems to be the most fake person oh, out there. Yes. Period. Every, everything he's doing is playing a role when the camera's on. Yeah, well, I mean, his he's the perfect coach for Missouri because at, at a place like Missouri, the only way you can get attention is by being obnoxious and stupid and doing weird things and being fake, and that's what he's done. Uh, I mean, that's why he's a perfect fit there. You you got to go above and beyond to get everyone's attention and and doing things in recruiting, but. Yeah, I mean, people know how I feel about Drinkwitz. I mean, my, my, that dude called me out by name at SEC Media Days. I mean, come on. Like, that's that's crazy talk that this dude cares about what a podcast host has to say about him. But, um, yeah, I just I, – I'm not a fan of his. And also the whole thing of standing on business and then running away from Josh Heupel when he's shaking his hand. And then the thing with the A&M player uh, that, he, that he got like ripped for by Elko earlier this year. 
I don't know. He's he's a clown, or, man. He's a clown. Yeah, or, or the uh, what was it against Alabama where he was down thirty four to nothing? It's like, hey, if we had our quarterback, it'd be a different story. Not a thirty four nothing. It wouldn't no. have been. No, that's 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 ridiculous. That's ridiculous. And 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 here's the thing too, like yeah, every every team's not going to be as good without their quarterback. One hundred percent. That's true. But like getting beat thirty four to nothing to a Bama team that's not that great. I mean, they're good, but not that great. That's that, a Bama no. team that lost to Vandy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like you're telling me that your starting quarterback meant zero points for you. If that to me, that's more of an indictment on him because that shows you didn't have your backup ready. Because your backup, I'm not saying he's as good, but at least when Arkansas, when Taylor Green got hurt against Tennessee, guess what? Malachi Singleton let him down for a touchdown. So maybe back just need to have your backs. Yeah. Back to back weeks, he didn't have Drew Pine ready. Yeah. So have your court backup quarterback ready. And then maybe, just maybe, you'll be able to be a little bit more successful than scoring zero points. Because I'm guarantee you, uh, me and you could go in there and score zero points as quarterback. We could probably do that. Yeah, it's like um, I, I it's like after the Ole Miss um Kentucky game, I could lose to Kentucky. I yeah. could make that happen. You know, yeah. it's one of those situations. Well, anyway, let's get back in the storyline for Ole Miss. Ole Miss is a little bit in a transition phase on their team. This is not the Lane Kiffin Ole Miss teams of 2020, 2021, and 2022. They are getting out of the always going forward on fourth down. They're getting out of that type of stuff because of how good their defense is. Against Oklahoma, there was a little bit of remnants in the second quarter where they tried to go for a fourth down. They got stopped. Oklahoma went down, scored a touchdown. And instead of being at halftime 13 to 7, Ole Miss, you're down um, 14 to 10 or something like that. And the third quarter, that just stopped. There was no more. If there was a time, it was fourth down, it was time to punt or kick a field goal. Every drive is going to end with a kick. We're going to stop them on third down. We're going to drive the ball. And kind of that, what we used to always joke about with Alabama of joyless murder ball yeah. kind of popped in. And it was 13 to nothing. And Oklahoma had absolutely no hope. And in the fourth quarter, I think five out of the last seven plays, they sacked the quarterback. Yeah, that, that's that's wild to me. And I, and I, this is just an outsider's perspective looking in about Ole Miss, and I'm, hope, I'm sure the Ole Miss fans will get mad at me for even asking this question. But I'm serious. I, if I was an Ole Miss fan, I'd be very pissed off. I'm just going to be honest. Like, I would be pissed off by the way that this season has gone. And it's crazy because you're 6-2 and two and your two losses were by three points to SEC foes. But that Kentucky game is, oh, man, that's a bad look. Yeah. That is a bad look. And then the LSU game, you should have won that game because you did every single thing to win, except for it's kind of reminding me of that Oklahoma State game Arkansas had earlier in the year. They did, they beat them in every stat. They doubled them up on offensive yards, except the thing that matters the most, which is points. So, and and it's weird also to see where I going into this game, I'm more concerned about Ole Miss's defense than I am the offense. Not to say that the offense isn't good because they can score. I mean, they can do they they're perfectly capable of that, but it's just so strange to face a Lane Kiffin coached Ole Miss team and be like, hey, the defense is what's going to win this game for them, not necessarily the offense. And seeing that Oklahoma got sacked, what was it, nine times in that game? Ten. Ten, ten sacks and, and no offense. But you only win 26-14? Mm -hmm. Like, that, that's also mind-blowing to me. It was like, how do you – ten sacks? That's absurd. Like anybody would have a, it'd be a great season for an individual player to have 10 sacks in 13 games. And then six they had, of those sacks were in the fourth quarter in like the last three minutes. Right. But, but yeah, but yeah. Well, it get, good point. But they had, my point is like it, that's what's been kind of weird about this old miss team that I've just, again, outsiders perspective where they do, it's almost like they have one really good thing that they do in a game, but then there's something else that ends up bringing that type of performance down, which they still won, but they're just a hard team to figure out. They're a hard team to figure out. I I think they're good, but at the same time, like what's their what what you maybe you tell me what's the best win on the season for them right now? Is it South Carolina? Yeah, it's probably point? South Carolina at the moment. I think I, I say all the time the biggest rival in college sports right now is Ole Miss versus clean football. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean it's a penalty, it's a turnover, it's something like the Kentucky game was like a clinic in how to not play football. Yeah, I mean yeah. it was it was it was completely rough. But whenever Ole Miss plays its best and they play clean, there's nobody in the country that can beat them. Mm -hmm. Nobody. Yeah. yeah. And, and see, and, that, and that's like, I'm not trying to say Arkansas is the same because I think Ole Miss, oh, on paper, better team than Arkansas. 
But that's been the key for Arkansas, too, is the games that Arkansas has won the turnover battle or tied for the turnover battle, they've won every single one of them. Mm. And then the games that they haven't, they've lost every single one of them. So mm. to me, I know we're, we're going to talk a lot about this game, but to me, that's 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 the key is like, as we're maybe not who's who plays the cleanest, but who sucks the less uh to this game that might be the one yeah who 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 screws up the least amount of times it's probably going to be the one that wins this game yeah if and what i was talking about earlier with the lane kiffin and being in transition um and what he learned against oklahoma if he would have played from the third quarter on like he did against oklahoma against kentucky he wins that game by two scores and he beats lsu as well yeah and Ole miss is seven and oh if they just play that way all they have to do is just not go for a single fourth down and Ole Miss is 7-0 and or 8-0 and right now. That's yeah. absolutely nuts to think about. But that is the case. It's ink. The ink is dried on that. It's happened. You have to figure out what's going on. And Ole Miss is going up to Fayetteville with their season on the line, with all the hype they had going in the preseason. You have to beat Arkansas. If Ole Miss beats Arkansas, there's a likelihood that game day is going to be on campus. This huge Georgia game is looming right after Arkansas. I said before the season, this game was the biggest trap game on the schedule because of who is directly after Arkansas. And I think that could have something to do, but maybe there's less of a chance that Ole Miss overlooks it because of the Kentucky game and them getting bitten. Yeah, and I think also too, kind of in the same point, in the same vein for Arkansas. You know, they they've like that LSU game it wouldn't have mattered because they got beat. But that A and M game and the Oklahoma State game, if they didn't have one pick six, which is early in the game, but if they didn't have that pick six against Oklahoma State, and if they did not fumble on their own six yard line against A and M, Arkansas wins both those games. And you're talking about hey, there's a, I know it's cliche to say, but Arkansas and Ole Miss could be going into this game eight and zero, seven and one, like both teams and game day could be coming for all we know so uh, but it's amazing how that works out but yeah that's the thing for Arkansas in this game against Ole Miss is that and I'm not going to sit here and say that oh if they lose this game it's all over but Arkansas is five and three three and two in SEC play they I think fans have been okay with how the season's gone it's definitely exceeded a lot of people's expectations they got three SEC wins which is triple what they had a year ago but you got Texas coming up they get a bye week after Ole Miss and they get Texas at home and which we know what happened last time Texas came to town uh, in 2021. But then they get Louisiana Tech, which they're really bad. They should win that game. And then at Missouri, which is another game that Arkansas fans hate and get frustrated by because they seem to lose that one every time. My point is, is that if they beat Ole Miss this weekend, it makes Arkansas bowl eligible. They're four and two in SEC play, and they're going into a bye week before Texas. I mean, you you talk about riding high and feeling really good about the season so far, but also about the possibilities of what could happen, where if you just win one more SEC game, you're talking about having an over above 500 record. Yeah, and I think everybody's going to be rooting for Arkansas in that game against Texas too. But if they do that, they haven't had above 500 record in SEC play since 2015. Mm -hmm. So if they do that, it's really going to turn things up a notch. But if they lose this game to Ole Miss, it's going to be hard for people to believe that they're going to beat Texas or Missouri just because of how disappointing and how down they're going to be. Uh, also about how they lose too. That's always a big key. Thanks again for tuning into the Locked On Ole Miss and Locked On Razorbacks podcast. When we come back, we're going to do pass the victory. We are going to give our score predictions. And I'm also going to ask John why Arkansas has never played Oklahoma for some reason, even though they're three hours apart. Anyway, stick around for that. What's up, Ole Miss fans? Our friends over at 5 Hour Energy know that being passionate football fans isn't just a hobby. It's a way of life. It takes a lot of energy to power through the day of tailgates, touchdown celebrations, and even those agonizing second overtimes. That's why they created the Stand of the Fan 5-Hour Energy Shot with a special flavor called Fan Fuel, designed specifically for super fans like us. You know, the fans who are first in the Grove and last to leave, we see you. You know what gave me my Fan Fuel this week? Well, it was the moment that Jackson Dart completed that scramble pass to Micah Davis and the whole stadium started rocking. And with a big matchup against Arkansas just around the corner, the energy is electric and everything seems to be in place for an electric close. Five Hour Energy knows that no matter what team you root for, being a fan takes the heart, soul, and energy, all of it. Whether you're prepping for a big tailgate or ironing your jersey, that game, to, game day to-do list is never short. It's why the limited edition Stand the Fan 5-Hour Energy Shot is here to keep you going all season long. 
So what's your fan fuel this week? Whatever it is, do it with 5-Hour Energy. Get yours today at 5hourenergy.com. Available and shipped nationwide. Let's go, Rebels. All right, we're back in Thunderdome. We are talking the Ole Miss-Arkansas game, the dumbest game on the schedule every single year. And, John, I'm just going to ask the question, what is the deal with Arkansas not playing Oklahoma? That is so weird. Y'all are three hours apart, and they never play. Trust me, I, I have wondered about this a lot, and it, it, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Arkansas used to play Oklahoma State pretty often. I know they played them this year, and they got another game, but uh, back in football, back when the Southwest Conference days, they would play Oklahoma State quite a bit. And the only thing I can come up with is Oklahoma never wanted to because Arkansas has always reached out to regional opponents, uh, especially ones that are – because Fayetteville's in it. Fayetteville's awesome. Northern Arkansas is awesome, but it's in its own area where, I mean, the, the closest campuses in the SEC until Oklahoma joined was like Oxford. That was like the closest one, which is six hours away from Fayetteville. And I think Missouri's five and a half, or maybe it's closer now too, but the point is – now, there aren't anyone close, any major schools. But yet, Oklahoma, Norman, three hours away, a little over three hours away, makes zero sense of why they've never played. And it's really disappointing because they met a couple of times in the bowl games. And they also played in basketball a lot. They played in mm -hmm. baseball, played in every other sport. But I can, my only guess is that I guess Bob Stoops and Lincoln Riley and all those people were just too high and mighty to play, uh, to play Arkansas just three hours away. That's all I can figure out. Yeah. All I know is Ole Miss is undefeated against them. I don't know what the big deal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, listen, it, it takes a lot to be undefeated against a, a Power 5 opponent, uh, but I don't know if Arkansas is or, or whatever. But, hey, Oklahoma, I'm just, I'm just really not upset at all that they're struggling in the SEC first year. I'm just saying that. Yeah, and, you know, the Oklahoma fans came down the grove. Their mind, they were completely blown away by the SEC tailgating. The, I guess that was the first time they actually saw real SEC tailgating. I know they had been to Auburn, but – everybody's like, well, well, we've got an upper game. We've got an upper game. It's like, well, if you think that, that was an 11 o'clock kickoff. Don't come for a night game. Yeah, well, that's like, uh, as you saw, and I dressed up as Baker Mayfield for uh, for Halloween or whatever, because he got arrested on Dixon Street here in Fayetteville while he was the quarterback of Oklahoma because he tried to run away from the cops, and they tackled him. And it was a really big spectacle. But my joke behind that was the fact that Baker Mayfield, the starting quarterback of the Oklahoma Sooners, and the Heisman Trophy winner came to Fayetteville. He didn't stay in Norman to party it up. He came to Fayetteville, and it kind of shows you how bad Norman must be. Because Fayetteville's awesome. Like, Dexon Street's crazy and great, but it shows you how bad it is where he, he wants to drive three hours to go and have a good time. So I guess Oklahoma in the party scene is just not that good. All right, let's do paths to victory in this game. What do you see for Arkansas to win this game? How does the game look? Well, I know I alluded to it a little bit earlier, but it, it's it's simply about turnovers. Arkansas cannot turn the ball over. And, and if they do, it's it's going to be a bad game for them, plain and simple. I think Arkansas is capable of playing a clean game. They did it against Tennessee, and like, that's what's crazy with Arkansas getting that win against Tennessee. Neither team turned the ball over. So, uh, and Arkansas needed that, because if they would turn the ball over one time, it would have been over, and Tennessee would have won. So it shows you just how small a margin of error there is when it comes to turning the ball over. But to me, that's what it is for Arkansas. If they do that and they keep Taylor Green as protected as possible because he is a running quarterback, he can elude a lot, but still Ole Miss is really good defensive front. If they do those two things, I think those are the things that's going to help Arkansas win this game. Of course, they got to get points. That's, that's a no-brainer. And the defense has to play well. That's a no-brainer. But the biggest problem for Arkansas has been turnovers and lack of protection to the quarterback. They do those two things. Arkansas wins this game. I think Ole Miss needs to get out to a two-score lead in the second half. They get out to a two-score lead in the second half. This game is basically over, and I, I think they have a – that is their path to do it. They're not going to score a ton of points. If you're expecting them to break 30, I don't think that is going to happen. It's going to be on the defense to keep Arkansas below 14, and I'm, you know, I'm thinking somewhere in the neighborhood, uh, I'm going to go with 24 to 10. Ole Miss wins this game. Yeah, and I, and that's the thing. You brought up a good point about the the two score lead. Yeah, I think if Ole Miss has uh, gets up by two touchdowns, fourteen points, really at any point in the game, but especially in the second half, it's over because Arkansas is just not that team that's built to come from behind uh, when it comes to to that level. But uh, but yeah, I, I, here's the thing: as I think Arkansas is going to play really well in this game, I really do, and I hope I'm wrong about this. 
but I think Arkansas is going to fall short a little bit. They don't play well at home. They never have. I know that everyone sees that game they played against Tennessee. Yeah, and I know that's what's weird. That's what's making it so weird is that they had that game against Tennessee earlier this year, and that was great, but Arkansas still didn't play great. They just did great defensively. The offense was not good, and they didn't play well against LSU. And if Arkansas can come in here, and, and if Arkansas wins this game in a similar way to what they've done before, then there's truly, like, Ole Miss needs to not get to go to Fayetteville ever again in football because that We're is – We're trying. We're yeah, trying. It, that, that just means something crazy. But I just feel like Ole Miss is motivated. They're, gonna, they're, they're too good defensively, and that's been a problem for Arkansas. I think it's a close game. I think you see crazy things happen. But I think that uh, Ole Miss uh, ends up getting the victory 17-13. Uh, to 13. Low-scoring affair. Close game. But one that neither team plays well. But you get out of there with a win, and Ole Miss uh, continues on. So that's that's what I feel like it's going to happen. All right, that's John Neighbors from Locked On Razorbacks. What is your post game plans for this for Ole Miss fans that might want to tune in to what you're doing? Yeah, so uh, we do a, a live stream on Inside Arkansas, the company that I own here in Arkansas, where we uh, do all sorts of live streams and uh, written content on InsideArkansas.com. Soon as the horn sounds, as soon as it's over, I mean, the second that the game is over, we go live on our Inside Arkansas YouTube page and social media. So we'll uh, have a reaction to that and get to phone calls, get to chats, get to all that good stuff. And uh, I'm sure that uh, everyone will be very rational and very uh, normal and sane after a game like this. But I will say, though, real quick, Stephen, that it, it, I'm glad it is an 11 a.m. game because if it does go to like 18 overtimes with this new root overtime rule and everything, at least it won't be a late night for us. We'll at least be able to enjoy uh, that in a little more mid-morning action. So, but yeah, it should be good. Absolutely. And how do you score 58 points on Mississippi State and go 0 for 7 on third down? Man, listen, <laughs> that and like that. And what's craziest about that is that Arkansas going into that Mississippi State game was number one in the SEC in third down conversions. They went 0 for 7. They were dead last in red zone percentage offensively, and they went nine for nine. So <laughs> I, I don't, who knows, man? Who knows? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. No one Absolutely. knows what to expect out of this game or out of this Arkansas team. Who knows? But uh, let's just hope it's a, it's another epic, legendary, iconic, crazy game like it always is. So at least both teams can have, go through an emotional roller coaster. It'll be great. Yeah, and any Locked On Razorback fans that want to see me either extremely elated or melting down after the game, we go live about 45 minutes afterwards, so you could probably catch both of them if you wanted to. Anyway, John, thank you very much for stopping by. We'll talk to you, honestly, next year, buddy. All right. Sounds good. Appreciate you guys. All right. Thank you for making Locked On Ole Miss your first to, first and go-to source for Ole Miss sports. We pride ourselves on offering the most comprehensive perspectives, which is why we're the number one Ole Miss sports podcast out there. And your support means the world to us. Thank you for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen today. For your second listen, check out Locked On SEC Podcast. Host Chris Gordy holds no punches covering the best conference in college football, Find Locked On SEC on YouTube or wherever you listen to your podcast. And also, exciting news, you can now become a Locked On Ole Miss insider. It is the best and easiest way to stay updated on all things Ole Miss sports. It is our texting program that sends you notifications on anything relevant without the hassle of a message board filled with trolls. Enjoy the 14-day free trial. Experience the future of college sports coverage. We're constantly adding new perks as we grow, so do not miss out. The link is down in the description. And for those of you watching on YouTube, we will send you to Locked On College Sports right now. Howdy toddy, everyone.